everyone, this is Gail, and I'm back with another polymer clay tutorial. And as luck would have it, um, I had on my list of things to do, because someone had requested to me to show them how to do a Sutton slice. And I, that is uh, something that Lisa Pavelka has come up with. And I have all the had all the directions written down and I you know have it practiced yet because I just haven't had time and then lo and behold I turn on my YouTube this morning and she has done another video on the Sutton slice for Fire Mountain Gems so I just want to let you know I am not copying her um, it just so happens that I learned this from her years ago and, you know, had, had this already planned, but I am going to go ahead and reference Lisa's video in the uh, comments below. Excuse me, I'm just seeing dirt on my stamp that I want to use. Um, she, you know, she's, I think she explains it in her Fire Mountain Gems video. It has something to do with some one of her students. She was teaching them to do one thing, and... It kind of morphed into something else, and then and his last name was Sutton. So she, because he's the one that they were that was working with her at the time, they called it the Sutton slice. And I think this is going to be okay, but I might use this end anyway. But I've got several Lisa Pavelka stamps, and I do recommend them just because they are really deep etched. She designed them specifically for polymer clay. There are plenty of other uh, texture sheets you can get. I got this one specifically to make tiles. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe I better use this one. Only thing is I don't it's the other designs are going to get in the way. I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to convention and I want to take something that I've made with clay to my uh, roommate and my direct upline we have this tool called the bloom tool that has little attachments and you can store or on the tool itself you can have two attachments and you can store two inside but then there's still three or four others three I think and I thought I would just make them a little container to store their bloom tools in so maybe I will do this I was thinking this would be better, but maybe I'll do this one. So what you need is a deeply etched rubber stamp. And this one is called Ancient Doodles. And this is one of Lisa Pavelka's uh, textures. And you want to have clay in two different colors. And I'm going to use the colors that I used on the drawing in clay video I did last week because I still had that clay out. I'm going to use the green for the background, so I'm just going to set that aside. And I'm going to use the pinkish color that I blended uh, as the fill-in. Now you want to make sure that your clay is nice and soft. And you want there to be some contrast, and I believe there's enough contrast between these that it will work fine. But I was thinking more of the floral thing before, so maybe I'll use this area. So you just pull off little pieces of clay. This is souffle clay, so it's going to be nice and soft. And you do want it to be nice and soft. And I'm going to try to come in a little bit so you can see better what I'm doing. Only problem is when I zoom in, I have a tendency to go outside of the uh, area, out of the screen. But uh, I'm going to try doing this one here because I think that would fit really well in the center of this tile, of this box. Or I could do this one. We're going to Phoenix and that would be a little bit more um, Aztec-y. <laughs> or this one. That should work too. I'll just work in this area and I'll see what I come up with. But you want to make sure you get your clay really, really soft. 
and just pinch off a little, just a little piece, just a little pea-sized piece. It doesn't have to be big. And start pressing it in on your design. Now, I've tried this before and was not very successful, and I think the reason was I wasn't doing this step. I was covering the entire um, area and then shaving. But what Lisa recommends is anchoring a blade somewhere, you know, like here, and then just swinging across and just, you know, slice and slice and slice until you don't get any more off. See how it's gone down? The only thing that's left is down in the grooves. And then you take some more clay and you go to the area next to that. And you press that in. And just make sure you press really good because it needs to stick in the in the uh, stamp. And just again, just slice until you don't see any more on the outside. This isn't the last time we're going to slice. We're going to keep doing it. But you just keep doing this until you fill the area that you like. Now I have tried this before just by going this way, but I think this cleans it off a lot easier. Now here's some areas that I don't want on my design. So I'm going to just take my clay and pull it up. It'll just save a lot of time later. And then just go back to filling. It doesn't take long. It's not a long process, but you do need to take your time, which again has been one of my problems because I have a tendency to rush through things, especially if I've been working on them for a few minutes. It's like I start off being patient and then... I start off being patient and then uh, want to hurry up and get done. But you just go from different directions. See how I, I went one way and nothing came up. I went a different way and it came up again. So I need to get this area down here. But at this point, you don't really have to worry about going out of the lines. I just, there's a little piece there I need to get off. But I just feel like the quicker I get it off, the less likely I am to leave it there when I'm finished. You just keep going until you get everything off of the surface of your clay. So that the, in this case, it's perp, uh, gray rubber. Until there's nothing on the gray rubber. And I'll, we'll go back and tweak it a little bit after I finish filling in just to show you and so you don't you just do it a little bit at a time now what I was trying to do before was putting a big piece on here and trying to get it all filled in and it never turned out right so in a way I'm glad that Lisa's video came out just a few days ago I believe let me go ahead and get this up while I'm looking at it See, so you, you can see, I mean, I just pinched off a tiny little square of clay. That little tiny, and this is like on a number, maybe a number two on my pasta machine. And, I felt, and that little piece I'm still pinching off of to fill in. So it doesn't take much clay. I'm hoping using the souffle, even though the souffle clay is not a sticky clay, and sticky clay usually works better. Primo may have may work better, but I had this already out, and I was trying to think of where I was going to put it, and I thought, well, why don't I just use it? You know, I'm at that point now where I have to start thinking about when I do a project, whether it's something I'm going to use 
or is it just something else to take up room in my little craft area? That was probably a little bit too big of a piece. See, that's what happens when I get going. I start getting impatient. It's something I've got to learn not to do. Okay, and get this area down here. Trying not to go over this outside border because what I want is the inside border. Although if I do the outside, then it will give I won't have to trim around it. I think I will. Sorry folks. But I think I'm going to show you how you can use this with two different colors. I hadn't planned on doing that, but I, there was a place right here that needed just a little bit of clay in there because it's between two of the places that I pressed and it was just like a little seam left there. When I finished this color, I was going to just do this one, but like I said, I can show you if you if this is all you wanted to do, then you would skip the next step and just go straight to the background. But just keep you know, scraping over it cuz you don't want anything on the top of this to come over this and we'll go over it even again, another time before this is over. So I had some of this color. Of course it's not condition. Remember these little strings that I made when we did the drawing? But it's soft enough. I think I will just condition it and I think I'll put that around this outside border. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Maybe just on these two sides. We'll have to see. Because this part is going to be too wide unless I wrap it over the top, which I could do. So this one, I'm going to do long skinny pieces. Because that's the size of the area that it's going to be filling. And of course, I should have pinched that off. I tell you, I just, when I get to going... But when working in more than one color, you only work with one color at a time. And I think rather than have you watch me do this again, I will fast forward through this so you won't have to watch. So I will be back when I'm done. Okay, I wanted to just come back for a minute to show you. See how right here, let me find something to point with. Right here, there is a little bit of the yellow that got on the back of this. You don't have to worry about that. You don't want to put a lot on here, but because the right side of this clay is the underneath side, and that part is the pinkish color, then you don't have to worry about a little bit getting on the outside. So just wanted to show you that before I went on.
Okay, I have filled in the area. I'm going back now to look to see if there's any places I need to touch up. And I think right in here needs a little bit more clay. Because this is not going to be a straight edge on my border, this is going to be a little bit more difficult to clean out. Because I don't want it to come too far out, but yet I need it to fill in all the space. Does that make any sense at all? And of course, pick up all your little bits and pieces that are left behind. And then again, we're going to shave. And see some of the pink is this is where your colors will mix a little bit see some of the pink will come out so you don't want to mix those together unless you want a mixed color that's fine this has still got clay on the gray so I need to shave over here a little bit more and every time you do this you're creating more little pieces that will be in your design that you need to get out later. But it's easier to get them a little at a time. Need to cut that. Than it is to wait until you're finished. Because you're more likely to miss some that way. Go have to get me a little ball of mixed clay here. Matter of fact, I probably have enough to start a little ball of mixed clay. You just need a, enough to stick on here and pick up any of these little stray pieces. Because when you put your background on here, you don't want all these colors sticking to your background. You just want what's in the Sutton Slice to be in your background. Okay, and just Keep going. Keep. There's still a little bit of residue here, so I need to make sure I get that off. Of course, I'm creating more little bits. Big ones like that you can just take off. But you just need to make sure that all of this is all totally off of the gray. You see nothing, none of your color should be showing on top of the gray that you want to show, you know, that's raised. And it doesn't hurt if you go into it a little bit. Matter of fact, it probably would make it cleaner. It's better to have that than to have any of these little areas showing. Let's see if I can do this in a way that See, even some of the pink is coming off. So just keep going until you're satisfied. Just adding to my little mixed ball here. At this point, I probably can just go ahead and use some of this too. I need enough clay to pick up my little pieces. But like I said, just make sure all of this is picked up before you put your background color on. Because what you see is what you get. So all these little bits and pieces will show up on your background. Okay. 
Well, I just don't think I can get any more off. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to take one of these uh, patty papers and I'm just going to burnish it down just to make sure that everything is all stuck together and Okay, now I've got my green background. Got a fingernail mark in that, but it's. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down on here and I'm going to lay the patty paper on top. And I'm just going to press first this way. Then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to press because now you want this background clay to catch all of that clay that you placed in there. Then you can turn it over and do the same thing. Press this way. This way you're pressing from both sides. I know this is sort of in the center of this. I can't see it, but I'm assuming that it's going to be in the, here in the center. Okay. Now, here comes the scary part for me, maybe not for you, but it is scary for me. We're going to peel back the rubber stamp. Now see when I start peeling it's right here and just you know this is not where our design is but if you peel it this way, roll it over and peel it and go slowly Alright, we're starting to get to our design now. If anything ends up getting stuck in the, in the stamp, you can roll it back down. Now there's a little dot here that didn't stick, so I'm just going to press that again and see if I can get it to stick. I did, and I'm going to press that little dot because that seemed to work pretty good. And just keep rolling. So far, so good, but even when Lisa did it, she had lots of little pieces that stuck. All right. So there is our design. Let me come in. So now you can take this and slice it to the size that you want. I'm going to, I think, slice evenly. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit over it because I'm going to wrap the green around the side, the corners of my tin. That should allow enough, I hope. If not, I can show you how to fix that too. I have, in my years of working with clay, I have become a master of fixing things. <laughs> you know, when I just did that laugh, when I listen to myself, when I'm editing my videos and I hear that laugh, it reminds me so much of my mother. So I'm becoming my mother more and more all the time. Oh, first... Well, this one isn't cleaned out very well. Still got cinnamon Altoid in it. I love cinnamon. Sorry, I'm just cleaning this out before I start because it'd be easier now than after it gets covered in clay. And it's alcohol, so it'll dry quickly. There. But when you're looking at your tin, look at how it's made. Because you've got hinges 
and you're need, going to need to trim around those hinges. But I'm going to use some bacon bond. And just smear it all over the top. Now you can use liquid clay if you like because you know that would do the same but bacon bond is sort of a, a liquid clay that's got an adhesive in it and I just feel better using that. Let me come back out a little bit. You don't need to see this real close up. But I'm going to even go around the sides. Now if your design is not big enough to go around the sides and you trim it around the top then you have you know it's going to be a separate step. What you would do in that case is if you trimmed it across the top, say you have a round tin like this one. And this one has a ridge. Oh, I'm sorry. Getting a phone call. Just a minute. Sorry, I wouldn't normally do that, but I'm still waiting for somebody to come work on my air conditioner, and I was hoping that was him, but it wasn't. But anyway, as I was saying, what you would do if like in a tin like this where I wanted to cut, trim right around and just make this circle and leave this maybe a different color here, you would go ahead and stick, you know, put your Sutton slice on with with bacon bond or, you know, uh, Lisa Pavelka used her uh, her glue. But um, then put it in the oven for just maybe 10 minutes, just enough to start curing this so that you can start holding it while you're working on the outside rim and it won't hurt it. So at this point, if that's what you were going to do, you would stick, you know, put it on here, trim it, and then put it in the oven. But I'm hoping I can get my sides to work. So now I'm going to peel this off of my paper. Be real careful not to stretch it. And lay it where you want it. It's not centered very well. This side now needs to come down. Okay, so that, it did cover. It's still not perfectly straight. I just don't want to mess up my design by pressing too hard. And then press this this way a little bit. There. And what I'm going to do here on the corners, I'm just going to kind of pinch them together. And slice down. See what it does. And then I can pinch those together. And take a little tool. Something. Let's see, one of these has a little spoon on the end. This little tool, like a little tool like this. Or any clay tool that you got and just smooth it. But we're going to fix that again in a minute. And then trim. And you see here, luckily this stopped right at the top of my hinge. So when I do the bottom is when I will have to do my trimming. It's just a little bit right there. I might just trim first and then do the corners after I trim. I'll have less clay. I'm just going to go into this ridge right here and run my clay blade around it and it pulls off. Although I will have to cut some of this. It's not going to go through all of that. And don't trim all the way to the corner because you need some clay to work with. Then 
and then just take your blade, trim where you want to trim. And this slipped up a little bit. I'm going to have to stretch that clay down. It's one good thing about clay. See where the red is showing there? All I got to do is take this and push it down. I don't care if that little metal rim shows. And again, you can use your scrap clay to clean up the edge. Push that down to meet that little ridge. And I like doing just one side at a time because it's easier to control that way. And just this little bit, and then I'll be ready to finish this part of it. And if you're comfortable with it, you can take your blade and run it along this ridge. If not, you can maybe just rub it with your finger just to get it smooth around that little ridge. Make sure everything is covered up. I do need to get a little bit off of this hinge. Because once it bakes, this hinge won't turn. And let's see what happens when I lift it up. Well, that'll be okay. I think that's fine just the way it is. So there's my little box. You do the and to cover the bottom, which because this has got writing on it, I am going to cover the bottom. All I'm going to do is take the green clay and do the same thing on the top, except I won't have to worry about the design. There's no design. But that is your Sutton slice. It's very pretty in black and white. You know, either either way, you can put black into your stamp and cover it with white, or you can put white into your stamp and cover it with black. So I think that turned out pretty good. There's probably a place here where I could have used a little more of the red clay, but you know, I'm not worried about it. Oh, what I was going to show you to finish up the ends depending on the look you want on these corners where you you know if you want because in messing with it you're going to have mashed some of your design I like to take a ball tool and just kind of dab it don't hold on to the top or you're going to lose your design there I think I just did And you may have to trim a little bit after you do this, but if you don't do it too hard. But just do this on the edges, which not only gives them a good grip when they're trying to open the box, but it looks good. Can you see how that, see, I think that looks really nice. But I would bake this at the this is souffle so it's 275 and because it's going to be handled I want it to be nice and strong so I am going to bake this for an hour at 275 and I kind of lost my design so I think I'm going to take my little ball tool and go all the way up to here So it won't look like I made a mistake. It'll look like it's meant to be that way. 
which it is, right? But bake at 275 for an hour just to make sure it gets nice and strong. Be sure that you use an oven thermometer. I'm hearing a lot of people saying that they are baking it at lower temperatures but for a longer time. That does not work with polymer clay. Polymer clay has got to reach 275 degrees in order to be strong. If you don't get it up to 275, or at least the salt, either Primo or souffle, if you don't get it up to 275, it's not going to be totally cured. And it may break, it may crack. Let's see. Still holding the bottom. I just wanted to see where I need to come to finish matching up here. But there you go. There's my little box. And I think it looks fine with that dappled uh, edge around it. So there we go. So give it a try. It's, you know, might take a little practice. But Sutton Slice can be so much fun. And look at, I mean, I had that tiny little piece of green clay. I've got that left. I have this left from that tiny little square of pink clay. And then this is my mixed clay ball that I made. And I still have this in the gold. So you can see it doesn't take any clay at all. So I hope everybody liked this and will give it a try and show it to me. Post it on my Facebook page. I'd love to see it. I am going to bake it with this open. And then I'm going to come back after it's baked and I'll cover the bottom. And I'm going to, I'll show you the bottom. Um, I'll do a picture and put it at the end of this video. And may even use it as the thumbnail for the video. So you can see what it looks like when it's finished. So I hope you enjoy this. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Well, my box is out of the oven, and I decided to come back and show you what I've decided to do. I'm using some Inca Gold, and these are the trial sizes. This one is Marcella. But I get these from uh, polyclayplay.com, and they come in a set. You know, like this, you can get a set of several different colors of the trial sizes. And I've ordered some individual sizes. But I just felt it needed a little bit of shine. So I'm putting the Marcella on that. I ended up using the rest of the pink on the bottom. Put my name on it and scratched in 2017. But, um... Let me see. Let me get the top on. These are water-based, and they do dry out, and these are getting a little dry. And I don't think I have a good green. These are pretty yellow green, so I, don't, I may not do anything else except just put it on there. I'll probably put some glaze on it. But I just wanted to show you. You can also use a little sponge like this so you can get it in the places where you want it. I've got a few of these little things. But this is my box. You can see it open. Opens fine and closes. And so this is what one of my manager or my roommate is going to get when we go to convention. I'm going to maybe put a few more little, maybe highlight these. I went ahead and finished uh, with the Inca Golds and then I have varnished it with some Sculpey Glaze. I normally use Varathane, but the Sculpey Glaze was here. So I'm just going to let it dry. But I just wanted to uh, let you know that um, the Inca Golds are available at polyclayplay.com. The texture sheet, uh, both of these, are at Lisa Pavelka's um, uh, a link to... Um, to that actually I believe poly clay play also carries the uh, texture sheets if I'm not mistaken so give her a shot she's a good girl she's she does a lot of good things for the polymer clay world and she publishes uh, you know the one the video I the last video I did on the polymer clay painting she has uh, 
featured on her website. That's about the third or fourth time she's done that for me. She's she's awesome. So everybody, get your little Altoid tins and make them into something creative for a gift. A gift. Anything that, uh, they're also good to hold like the dies, these little dies that go into your extruder. They're perfect for those if you don't have another way to store yours. So have fun, pra practice with the Sutton Slice, and have a great day. Bye-bye.